Hello, everybody. Welcome to Lee Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusco, and uh, got a little streamlined today. Um, thought I was told to keep the hair so I wouldn't look bald. I like how I look better this way. And um, if you noticed on the last video, shave too. I was getting a little, a little rough around the edges there. But uh, anyway, so we got the uh, beginning of the week. Got a Monday show going on for you. Um, I actually just got finished watching all the coverage for the Apple Worldwide, Worldwide Developers Conference. Man, some cool stuff coming down the road for, uh, for Apple stuff. You know, iPhones and stuff like that. Kind of a fanboy. Um, so it kind of delayed me getting this started. But anyway, let's, uh, let's start off with, with a wine. I'm pretty excited about this after I did a little research on it. Um, and right off the bat, I'll tell you, I don't remember how much we paid for this. Um, it, this wine was bought a while ago, so I'm going to have to go by memory. But anyway, um, bought this wine just because, again, I like to buy stuff that's never seen before, looks interesting. So I looked at it and said, okay, well, let's check it out. You know, and I looked at the back and I'm like, okay, well, let's see what it's got. And it doesn't really say much. So anyway, let's, uh, let's go right into it. It's called... Uh, Teruzzi and Puthod, or Puthod, I don't really know because it's an Italian wine and I'm not used to seeing P-U-T-H-O-D in Italian, not that, you know, I read Italian very often, but the Terra di Tufi, uh, this is a 2005 Tuscan wine, uh, it's actually called a Super Tuscan, and it's a white wine, even though it's in a really dark green bottle, uh, so kept thinking it was a red wine <laughs> when you look at it so, oh it's a red no it's a white uh 2005 vintage and according to the bottle it's a 12.5 percent alcohol it's just a white tuscan wine so that's all it said on the label so let's go through what it, what's what's in it all right so it's got four varietals it's got the Vernaccia di san uh i'm gonna mess this last this part up uh jimmy jimigiano jimigiano it's g-i-m-i-g-n-a-n-n-o Anyway, that's the city, that's the town it's produced in. San uh, Jimmy John, almost, sounds like, almost sounds like I'm saying Jimmy John's. Um, but the Vernaccia grape that's made, that's grown in that town. Vernaccia is a, is a grape that's grown in, the, in that area. It's got a couple varieties of that. Uh, it's actually one of the uh, grapes, or wines made of Vernaccia was, I think, if I remember right, was the first uh, DOC uh First DOC in Italy for Vernaccia wines. Uh, it also has Chardonnay, Malvasia, and Vermentino. Out of those four, I only heard of Chardonnay till today. So um, that rhymes. So um, anyway, I'm really excited about this. I mean, uh, what also looked at uh, Malvasia and Vermentino, uh, they were they're also uh, from the the uh, northern Spain Madeira area. So uh, I guess it's northern Spain, but the Madeira area. And they're, they're apparently really closely re related to each other. So uh, also found out that uh, this is aged for four to five months in New French Oak. And there's only four, or not only, there's 430,000 bottles of this produced, this according to their website. Maybe not for the, specifically the 2005 vintage, but that's what they said was how much. Uh, according to the website, it's 13% alcohol, but label says 12 and a half. Um, and, uh, we're going to go on a guess here. We think, we don't remember, but we think we paid $8.99 for this. It could be $9.99 or $10, but uh, it was in that between $8, $8 and $10 range. It was on sale at World Market. I know, plug in World Market again. Hey, wait till later this week. We're going to have some, uh, have some wines <laughs> that I'm going to get from elsewhere. Uh, found, found a great deal at CVS. So we're, we're going to have some fun with that. Um, but uh, I'm pretty sure it was $8.99 at World Market. Uh, the, the little shelf talker was talking about how I think it was normally a $13 or $14 bottle of wine, which is about right from what I researched. But it drank like an $18 to $20 bottle of wine. So a lot of hype on this. And this is the type of wine we really are trying to find on the show. Something that's under 10 bucks that drinks for twice as much. So um, let's see what... Let's see what uh, See what it does. See if it really um, lives up to it. Now this wine's been open for about three hours. Um, part of that, instead of the two hours, part of that was because that Worldwide Developers Conference keynote was an extra hour than I thought it would be. Um, so I mean, I can already smell. I mean, I can get these aromas just. 
I, I can smell it just from the bottle. When I first opened the bottle, you, you, it was already starting to take over the room. And I could smell it. Now that it poured it, man. All right, so let's see what we have in here. It's kind of a neat color, too. Just a little side note. Siri has been open all this time. I'm getting a fruity and also had a floral, a little bit of a floral component on the nose here. And I'm going fruity, but not like citrus, not like red fruits. Um, maybe, maybe kind of apple. Maybe a little bit of apple juice. Now that I'm now that I'm really thinking about it. So yeah, kind of appley or pear like. But I keep eating something else, like swirling it, but it's so far away. So something different. Can't tell. Anyway, uh, so we'll go with like kind of the a, a citrus, not citrus, uh, you know, fruits as far as like um, apples and pears, stuff like that. All right, let's see how it tastes. Yeah, I get I get a nice bit of apple in there. Um, it's it's a bit acidic. It's not it's not like razor sharp acid on the on the uh, on the palate. Um, yeah, it's kind of creamy. That's the oak. That's the oak coming through. And that's what it was. It's kind of creamy. Yeah, I get this creaminess and, and it's, not, it's, it's a mouthfeel and also kind of a, a, a kind of a taste, um, kind of kind of buttery. And that's the oak, and it's only four to five months, so I guess it really takes to that oak pretty well. I mean, as far as I know, it shouldn't be that buttery, but but it, it kind of is. Maybe this sits in the oak a little bit longer. Actually, maybe the back of the label does say it says only four to five. Four to five months, but it's new French oak. And one little thing about, about barrels is that new oak imparts its flavors and characteristics on wine a lot, uh, a lot more, a lot quicker than, say, barrels that are a year, two, or three years old. Um, because they've, they've been used, it's, they don't impart the, uh, their characteristics, characteristic, characteristics sorry, as much as the other stuff. But, yeah. I get kind of yeah. Definitely get this it's this this almost buttery feel. I don't know, it's it's smooth, like real smooth. I'm sure if it was chilled, uh, it would go down really smooth. And um, you know, it's it's kind of tasty. I, I would say it's pretty pretty well made. Um, it's definitely a good deal for, for nine bucks, but um, I don't know if I'd want to spend eighteen to twenty on it, but uh, you know I could I could see I could see it being kind of in that range, and it's probably why they said it drinks like an eighteen to twenty dollar bottle of wine. It's not bad. I'd say I'd probably give it. I'd probably give it like an eighty-seven. I think I'd give it. I'd give it probably an eighty-seven. It's pretty good. Um, not not probably something that I particularly enjoy, but because uh, I, I would rather have a little more acid on here. And, you know, maybe that Chardonnay is what's coming through, kind of that buttery, kind of that, 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 that dairy-ish, buttery, you know, 
flavor. Kind of like popcorn, buttered popcorn. I'm not exactly a favorite, uh, fan of that. Um, so somebody else might consider it like an 89.1. I'm kind of giving it an 87, and I'm thinking I'm kind of bumping it up just because uh, all the Apple announcements, and I'm just like stoked about that stuff. Um, I mean, as far as like regular Chardonnays, I, pre I prefer the unoaked Chardonnays. I like because they have a little more zest to them, more acid. So I prefer that. But you know what? It's, it's not a bad wine. I, I, actually, I think I'd enjoy it. Um, you know, pairing it up with, uh, with a good chicken dish, maybe something with a little bit of cream sauce and a cream on cream. But, you know, that might, that might kind of work. I can see doing that. Um, so, yeah. So what else is going on? Uh, so tomorrow we'll have uh, yet another episode, but we'll also start sommelier school. Now, tomorrow's episode is going to be really short. It's just going to be a basic primer uh, on, on what is wine and how it's made. It, it's not meant to be an in-depth uh, discussion on the techniques of winemaking. It's just meant to kind of give those of you that just know, hey, uh, they, they make grapes into wine and they don't know how, you don't know how that happens. Um, so it's just going to be a real short thing. Uh, we'll do video. It'll also be text. Uh, I'll, I'll have an actual write-up on the, on the page and then there'll be a video that goes with it. No, I'm not going to sit here and read a script of, uh, of what I wrote. So it'll be more like I'll, I'll use what I wrote as notes to uh, talk about it. But the script, or what, what I wrote as far as notes, that'll be kind of like your guideline. Um, we're going to be using uh, quite a few books for Sommelier A School. Uh, I don't have the books in front of me today, but tomorrow I'll show them off. But the two books I'll, I'll end up using a lot are Windows on the World Wine Course by Kevin Zraeli and um, the Wine for Dummies book. And honestly, don't remember the author's names. Uh, I have them written down upstairs. But uh, those are the you know, really two books that, that give you a good uh, foundation of understanding wine. We're going to start tomorrow. It's going to be every week, every Tuesday. We're going to go through from the beginning of how is wine made all the way through all the regions of the world and different styles and all that kind of stuff. So it's, it's again, like I've probably explained somewhere on the website, this is to help me retrain myself to take the uh, introductory uh, sommelier exam hopefully sometime in 2010. Uh, if I can get it done before then, that'd be great. But uh, I don't see myself traveling really too far to go take the test. So um, we're going to do that. Uh, I did. I finally added uh, over here to the right, I added uh, an email link. I've got the iTunes subscription link. So uh, subscribe on iTunes is great. Friend me up on Twitter and Facebook. Uh, if I remember right, that Facebook link takes you to the fan page uh, for 1337 Wine. Um, I don't think it actually takes you to the profile page. Friend me up there. Become a fan of the page. Uh, and we got a shout out for Derek Baby Gonzalez. Yeah, you thought I was going to forget, didn't you, Derek? Uh, former, uh, former employee of mine. Uh, worked with him at uh, my last place of employment. Excellent guy. Um, and uh, his, his favorite word is legit. So hopefully, hopefully Derek, this is legit for you. Uh, what else are going to do? Twitter. Um, Guys, it's so humbling. Inside of a week, I've gained more followers on my Leet Wine Twitter account than I have on my Mars 8 account. Mars 8's been around for almost two years, and I just barely have, not even close to 700. I've got like 670 followers on there. I've got, I think, probably 700 now. Um, I mean, I was really close to 700 a little while ago, and I think I had 700 followers. So thanks to all of you. I'm sure there's some followers on there I could probably get rid of. But uh, thank you, everybody. Let everyone know. Friend me up on Twitter. Um, you know, one way to get other followers is to follow people. I can't follow anyone right now because I'm at that 2,000 limit. But, you know, hopefully we can get, I can get some more momentum, get some more followers. Um, I try to read, you know, as many of the updates as I can. But if you at or D me, I will definitely read those. I'll reply back as soon as possible. Uh, I got the email link on there, so it should automatically open up an email link. Uh, to send me a direct email. Uh, if you need to know, if you're, if you're watching the podcast, my email is mark at 1337wine.com. Send me an email. I'll try to answer as fast as I can. If you have any questions about the show, I had somebody, uh, uh, oh, I can't remember his name on, on Twitter, but he had sent me a, uh, he had sent me a, uh, a reply asking about the Syrah grape. You know, tell him some stuff. Well, it's kind of hard to tell you, tell you a whole bunch of stuff in 140 characters, but I gave him a couple replies back. And uh, so, I mean, I'll answer your questions as best I can. 
and uh, let's see what else. Got more ads on there. Click the ads, folks. Remember, this is uh, this is really my job now. So if you want to buy some stuff, I've got a whole bunch of advertisers there that you can buy a few things. Uh, I've got the library, you've got the marketplace. Stop by Amazon to buy a few things there. Or if you don't want to buy anything, you just want to like donate a couple bucks to uh, help pay for these things. Because remember, this isn't coming to me for free, and I'm not soliciting any of the wineries. But if somebody sends something, I'll be more than happy to review it. And if I don't like it, I'll tell you. Um, but the donate buttons are there, so if you want to donate or subscribe, you know, do a subscription button there. You can subscribe to the website for the RSS feeds. What else? Forums have started. No one's, as far as I know, no one's been on it yet. I haven't checked today. Comments, all this kind of stuff. I'm, I'm marketing right now. So build this stuff up. I'd love this to be actually my real, real day job. But yeah, I'm looking for a real, quote, real job in the meantime because that's what's going to pay the bills. But I want this to be my money maker. I want this to be paying my bills. And uh, hopefully I'm great delivering great content for you. If you have any suggestions, let me know. Uh, I think Friday's episode, which was recorded Thursday night, was a great time. Uh, I hope to do more of those things. Maybe have some in the field buying wine videos, stuff like that. So we're really going to try to do a whole bunch of cool things uh, with this. And I think I've rambled on long enough, don't you? All right, so that's going to be it. And uh, we'll be back tomorrow with another episode. And uh, also look for the Sommelier School episode on Tuesday. Thanks a lot. And uh, we'll see you again next time.